welcome, welcome to episode number 52 of the Eve's Drop Podcast. First episode of the decade, first episode of 2020. And today we couldn't have had a better guest to do it with. Our sponsors today are DoorDash, and we'll tell you a little bit more about them today, and also Turtle Beach. Uh, and I'll give you a rundown about them later on in this podcast. But we have today our honorable guest, one of the best ever in Call of Duty, best ever, two championship rings, impossible to achieve. But I don't think it'll, it can't ever be achieved again, can it? Like, because that the, the way that you attained yours was in, in the most pure and raw way that you could have because Call of Duty from its infancy till it became a, a, a league is the way that Call of Duty, like that was the toughest t time ever because one, uh, dynasties happen. Uh, two, it was in a moment in time where organizations were clawing their ways to be able to one, make salary, make travel and do this, that and the other before investments, before the lights, before everything. Like, you made it happen. How does that feel? Because you literally won the last one. Yeah, I mean, thanks for having me, first of all. Yes, Clayster, <laughs> Eubanks. Um, I mean, I think that the way I won champs, especially the two times, like you said, it won't ever happen again just because of the nature of the format. And you're going to be playing with your team for a long time going into champs. And, um, you know, it feels good just to be able to have the validation that, like, my ideas and philosophy on how to – build a winning team, a champ winning team, it works. And so um, the first time was like, okay, maybe that was a fluke, but then now they do it the second time and potentially like the last real champs that we have. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a good feeling. It, it makes me feel pretty proud of, uh, you know, what I've achieved and what I've accomplished. Very, very cool. I think that uh, you were the first player to really bring hype to, to Call of Duty. It, it hadn't happened before that. Everybody was a little timid and people would yell over, but nobody hyped <laughs> themselves up. The majority of the hype, uh, and and the first time I'd really experienced it was in London for EGL 7, I believe. But you were the first one to come in and really bring the hype to hype up your team as opposed to hype down to 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 sort of suppress the, the enemy and make them feel a certain way, to sort of impact their emotions and therefore impact the way that they play and use that to your advantage. You said, forget all that. I'm going to concentrate on me and my team, and I'm just going to be as hype as I possibly can. You're the first guy on call, in Call of Duty that I saw with <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That pose. And that pose is so iconic because what it was one of its first ones. I think in all of esports, I don't think any other esport out there has that sort of, I mean, aside from Gears way back in the day, but even then those pictures never existed. So we'll we'll get into all that. And I'm getting off on a rant because I'm so excited about the first episode. I haven't done a podcast in close to how long, Matt, Maddie? Four weeks? Five weeks? Four weeks. I haven't done a podcast in four weeks. So I'm I'm like, I'm, I'm itching. I'm climbing. I'm, I'm, I'm itching. I'm ready to go. So we'll start with this. Who are you today? Yeah, I mean, James Eubanks' friends call me Clay, or most uh, people in online call me Clayster. And, uh, you know, I play for the Dallas Empire now here in uh, good old Texas, where we're at right now. I love Texas, love the weather. And, you know, hopefully uh, going into this next year, trying to be as best as I can possibly be and carry on the success that I had from last year. Do you think that's going to be hard? Yeah, I think it's going to be insanely difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I commend you guys for going outside of Call of Duty and picking up raw talent from other esports because the, it does exist it is out there right the these two these two players that you have or the, the the one player they have like that is that that's that's not an anomaly like there are other people like if you think about paul duarte of snakebite if you think about lethal if you think about royal and then you go into gears and you're talking about billy you're talking about explosive and then you go into uh let's call it rainbow six like th there's there's so much talent out there that you don't have to sort of stand for the top 30 in that particular esport. And and I, I think that that was one of the smartest things that, that, that you guys did on your team was to go outside of that. If for whatever reason, nothing worked out, and I, I've said it like five podcasts now, if for whatever reason, it, what, what happened to me didn't happen, and I didn't have Scump, and I didn't have you know the players that I have, I would have gone out and made a story for myself by picking up like other people from other esports and people are a little bit mad but i wouldn't give a fuck you know what i'm saying because that talent is out there i mean they're gamers they're just like good gamers and there's a lot of them in esports and a lot of them that have grew up playing all sorts of video games and they kind of just settled on this one that they went pro in and but that doesn't mean they can't play other games and there's so many talented gamers especially console gamers like you're playing with the controller you can pretty much play any fps or yeah. you know third person shoot or whatever like a gears player can play cod a cod player can play halo a Halo player can play gears like yeah. they really can and 
It was a really tough decision because, I mean, we still don't know if it's going to work out. I mean, in practice and stuff, Shotzi has looked really, really good, but we're not sure how it's going to work out on land and how it'll work out the rest of the season. But so far, it's been where we want him to be, and he's improving at the rate that we want him to improve at. But, like, that I don't even really care about. I just care about, like, the actual, like, skill of the player is yeah. there. And he yeah. has it. Like, he's 100%. a freak of nature, dude. Yeah, freak of nature. Nasty. Yeah, yeah it's so good. Like, uh, God-given talent shot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like uh, like that. You play other you played other sports, and you're good at those sports. Uh, do you think that there is, like, if you weren't playing Call of Duty, which one do you think that you would pick? Your number one pick. Um, if I could just like switch right now, yeah. I mean, it'd be Counter Strike. Yeah. I'm just I, I love Counter Strike. I love the 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 like simplicity of it, but also the complexity of it. Like they, it goes both ways. Like it it comes down to a basic like you just got to headshot the other dude. But like before all that, there's so much that goes into it, and so much strategy, so much like thinking and stuff that I'd probably be a pro in Counter Strike if it wasn't COD. Yeah. Do you think that that Counter Strike is the best esport spectator esport out there? Obviously, you can't pick Call of Duty because yeah. that's biased. But yeah, I would pick. I, I, I would so either pick Counter Strike or Rocket League. I think Rocket League's a really entertaining esport to watch. And yeah, anybody can just like watch it. It's rocket cars hitting a soccer ball into a net. Yeah. I mean, anybody can get that, you know. So from a spectator point of view, it's one of the two, from in my opinion. So we at Energy just won the world championship there. That shit was insane. It was insane. I, I I agree. And and the amount of people that watch that in a live audience and the amount of people that watched that from home was insane like that th there are so many sleeper esports out there that don't get the the light of day but these are like massively viewed esports that people don't watch um so f so for me it's always been like about the discovery aspect of it just like every single day i find a new youtuber that has like a million f subscribers <laughs> there, and i'm like where the fuck did this guy come from you know that that that, that scenario all right so um you know, we'll, we'll talk about all this, but I want to keep it in chronological order. Now that we know who you are today, you're, 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 do you guys, have you guys nominated who your ca captain's going to be or is it just going to be like? It's kind of me, but yeah. I mean, it's not like a hard me. Like a hard you? Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, so it's like a. Shared responsibility between yeah. me and Crim Six. Yeah. So it's, it's not like a, like a Scumpy, right? Like no. Scumpy's a captain, but he's, no. he really, he's <laughs> just saying like, he's, he's the Sethy boy. So, okay, cool. Um. All right. So, who were you when you started playing video games, and and what led you to to have like such a, you know, well accomplished career? Man, when I started, I mean, we'll just start when I started playing COD because like when I started playing video games, I was like five years old, six years old, you know. Um. But when I first started playing COD, I was in high school, really not sure what I wanted to do with my life. I was kind of like fifteen like every years single old. Other. Yeah. There's like three little nerds out there, and I love nerds. So I'm not. I'm, this isn't derogatory. Um that know exactly what it is that they're going to do, period. And that's, that's what, you know, <laughs> power to them because they know. Yeah, I, like, didn't even know if I was going to college. And with the way that it worked out for me is since I'm a little bit older than even the people that were playing back then, um, I kind of had to make the choice, like, college or, or like, you know, work at a job near my hometown or whatever it is. And kind of last minute, like, applied at the last admission period to go to West Virginia University when I turned 18. And uh, like COD was kind of just like a back pocket thing. Then. Where are you from originally? Virginia, like okay, Northern Virginia. Okay. And um, COD was like a back pocket thing. Like it was fun. I played a lot of Halo growing up and like almost competitively a little bit. And uh, not ever like seriously, but you know, enough to where we'd scrim and stuff online. And I uh, used to play against some of the old Halo pros like Shook One and Light King and all those guys. But uh, you know, then going into like 18, 19 years old, I went to college and COD was still like nothing. Like I would go and compete at these like GameStop tournaments. Which, which COD are you talking about? Oh man, this was back in Modern Warfare 2 around that time. And so... You played uh, Call of Duty 4 though, Yeah, COD, COD 4 in 2008 and 2009. But it was just like, we played in the PCLs online, which if you guys don't know, they're like online pro circuit ladder. It's what the league basically was like yeah. back then, like integrated into game battles. And... uh it was just for bragging rights. Like I did it in my spare time. I did it because it was fun and I did it just to kind of talk shit. <laughs> and like, mm -hmm. it was really just, you know, back then it was kind of the wild, wild west of Xbox Live, like late 2000s. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of like anything goes. And so it was a lot of fun just to like get on there and have fun and, and actually be competitive. So I knew I had like some kind of talent there. Like, you know, in like 2008, 2009, when I was competing against other like COD pros, top eight teams, it's like, oh, I can compete with these guys if I have the right team or, like, the right players around me and put in enough time. Like, oh, I can compete with these guys and win. You know, it was, like, 2000 bucks if you won the PCL in, like, 2008. So it was, like, not even a considerable amount of money, but to an 18-year-old, I mean, two grand is two grand. And so um, it was it was really just, like, a fledgling, me figuring out who I was and where I was in life and kind of what I wanted to do. And Call of Duty was just kind of always there, like, as an entertainment, like, avenue for me. It was mm -hmm. never, like, something I even considered taking super serious.
And then once you once you did start it was Modern Warfare Two is when you were like, yeah, I mean, I can, you know, I'm 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 at the top right here. Like, yeah, I can do I can do this shit. Well, that's the thing. Like we, I was on AOX then, Art of Execution with like Prof and Next and some of the old guys that probably not a lot of people watching this will know who they are. But um, we eventually like going into Modern Warfare Two in 2010, we're like, all right, let's like try and be the best GB team. Let's try and be the best team. Like, any tournaments they have, let's try and win them all. And we ended up playing like really well at the start of the season. You know, I think we got like 100 0 in GB at the time when that actually was a big deal. And uh, then we were just kind of like, well, what do we play? And there's no land tournaments yeah, for, the, yeah. for the game. And so we're just like, well, I mean, nothing, I guess. We qualified for like a GameStop tournament for like 10K and we're super stoked about it. It was like a grueling three week long bracket to go to San Fran to play like for potential 10K. And so back then it was just like, how can I get to the place where I can make even a couple thousand dollars off Call of Duty? Because that kind of supplemental income to a college kid is like everything. It, me it meant I could eat something other than ramen yeah. for the week. So it was just like playing for rent money kind of. And back then that's really what it was all about is like being able to play Call of Duty to survive almost. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I, the, the great things start with small beginnings. And I think that I don't know what it was. I think it was like a literal perfect storm that happened in in our in our field. Because imagine if if Halo would have continued to be that successful esport and and continued to grow the way that it was. Because they started ahead and they had the backing of MLG. They had the backing of of their own developers. Uh, and we, you, me, and everybody else involved said, you know what, we we're kind of wasting our time here with Call of Duty. As fun as it is, and as that. That we need to make a living out of this. Let's go do this shit in Halo. Like that could have been a path that happened. I think about this shit all the time. It could have been a path that happened, and and who knows where that would have gone? Would it have been a successful? I don't know. But like the the fact that the amount of people, the amount of brains, the amount of of, of personalities that came into Call of Duty from the very beginning, sort of serendipitous, made this thing happen like magically because is so many brains coming together to create something like massive and it is big obviously yeah i mean i even have like pretty pretty close experience with like kind of how halo versus call of duty was back then i mean so like the only one of the only land tournaments in modern warfare 2 was nationals in dallas yep. uh and they had like we were a side station up against the, like in the middle of nowhere nobody's watching us halo had the main stage starcraft had this other side room and I like like I said, I came from Halo, and so I looked up to a lot of these Halo pros, and I'd like go up and try and talk to them, and they'd be like, "Oh, what do you play? You play StarCraft?" I'm like, "No, I play Call of Duty," and they'd just be like, "Oh," and like that that like disappointment in their yeah. face and in their voice, and it was just like I felt so bad at the time, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it made me feel like shit. Yeah. And I've talked to the pros who did it to me since then, and they like apologize, yeah, and of yeah. course <laughs> we've all grown and matured, yeah. but like back then it was like COD was a little like stepbrother, nobody talks about, yeah, he's yeah, just yeah, over yeah. there, and. For it to now kind of come full circle to where now I'm picking up a Halo World Champion onto my team and yeah. being like welcoming him with yeah. open arms. It's like, hey, we're not like you guys. Yeah, we're like, not like you, Halo, yeah, we're not, we're, stuck up. Yeah, we're not so stuck up. Yeah, we yeah, welcome yeah. everybody Superstar open arms. Superstar Red Bull athletes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got bleachers over there yeah, on your main yeah. stage. Like, you yeah. know, so it's interesting to see just, just like how Call of Duty came from that to like being looked down upon to now where we can kind of have our own two feet to stand on. Yeah. And it's, I like, like you said, it's a perfect storm. It's not one single thing that happened. It's like all of these things happening at the same time with the core group of yeah. like competitive people and content creators just like pushing the hell out of it yeah. to the point where everybody's like, oh wait, this is kind of entertaining. And yes. that's all we needed to do is show people it be like, watch this, you'll have fun watching it, yeah. you know? That, that's how I knew that 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 we at Optic were gonna be like, we're gonna be successful. That's how I knew that Call of Duty was gonna be successful because the storylines that we had didn't happen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the perfect example. X Games. We fucking didn't win shit all year. And then some people throw so they don't have to play a certain fucking team. And then we end up winning anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like We, we could have won any other one, but we didn't. We won the one that, that was going to be fucking covered by everyone because it wasn't just Call of Duty audience. It was... ESPN, it was like uh, Fox Sports, it was the X Games, you know what I'm saying? That's how I knew, I'm like, storylines like these don't happen unless you write them in a, in a story <laughs> for a book or a movie. This shit doesn't happen. The way that you came onto the team, uh, like, it doesn't happen. It took a series of events to happen that should have never happened, Scump leaving to Envy, and then that whole rotating, you know, <laughs> aspect of, of, of the whole situation. It was a shitty time. 
you know and i thank you for sticking around because you didn't have to you know what i mean like you you, you could have said ah oh, this is fucking shit show i'm fucking out and then what would that have cost what series of events would that have cost because one of the reasons that seth wants to come back was because he was going to play with fucking clayster and it wasn't going to be we're playing not not i'm obviously not talking shit about my good friend best friend big timer <laughs> but we were talking about a different fucking animal in you right you were like an actual yeah. fucking championship caliber fucking player so like the series of events that happen don't just happen unless you fucking write them to have like a good ending dude there's so many things that happen that like if one thing was different if like one even like kills on the map in a, in a tournament that happened that led to like for example me joining you guys i got dropped off complexity after winning an event then somehow went to tk we could have got last place but like clutched up to tie last minute then roared to second place and then me placing second wanted you guys to want me more because we just went to second with TK. Then I joined you guys and like just how that goes all along the way. It like you do. It's it's like fairy tale stuff. It and is. That's what makes COD entertaining though, and that's why you know what we're doing this year. I'm glad we changed it because we need those stories. You need those something to go along the way to give people like oh cr oh shit like what just happened i can't believe that just happened yeah. and then it leads to some crazy somebody winning a tournament and then like everybody goes wild twitter goes wild social media goes wild it's yeah i mean that's what cod is yeah and it, i mean cod as it is right now with the with the eight team tournament style well there wasn't even a thing up until like i don't know like a month ago and even then like the, the amount the, okay one the reaction of the people that are in there was super positive there's only like two people that are like they don't know what they're doing they're like changing shit up at the last minute i'm like no we know what we're doing which is why we're changing it at the last minute and luckily the league and you know i don't know about any other league out there because i've never been in any of those owner i haven't been in the owl league uh you know meetings i haven't been in the owners meeting for league of legends when we had the, the league of legends team i you know i, I was that was my off time uh, but in this scenario, everybody in the back office, you know, from from uh, from Pete Lostelica, Johanna to you know my man Spencer, uh, like they they all like were listening, and and they have such like they have Casey there from MLG, they have Preston there. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, Preston, right? Am I talking about Sp Spin of Spence? Spencer? Yeah, Sp Spin of Spence. Yeah, I'm I'm so dumb. <laughs> anyway, like they have people there from MLG who have been running these tournaments for twenty years, and in conjunction with with you know, people like Hasro, people like me, people like, you know, that, that that have been there, sort of like all got together and said, this is the way that it should be so it's a success. This is the, the way that it should be so we don't cold cut, cold turkey, cold cut turkey? Oh, what the fuck am I talking about? How do you, when you when you quit cold something. Cold turkey? Yeah, you, no <laughs> cold turkey separation of culture and what was built for 10 years with Call of Duty to ripping off the bandaid and saying you're playing only two uh, two matches you Maximum. guys bro you guys were about to go to london <laughs> play one match come home for two weeks go back to france play one fucking match and come back that made no sense no shout out to the cdl for that one for and you guys for yeah, pushing yeah. that and mike and everybody like dude because they were working on christmas eve mm -hmm. to, to get this fixed like yeah. we were dming our like rep 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 chat where like all the pro like pros from each team yeah. are in this chat with like some of the cdl guys and whatnot and they were on christmas eve dming each other about like you know format and what they what it could look like and uh, kind of how the groups and the bracket yeah. and everything look like and i was like I was like, Bowman, go spend time with your family. Like, stop, it's Christmas Eve. He's like, I got to get this done. Yeah. And then a couple days later, they changed the format. So I was like, oh, that's why yeah. all you guys were working so hard. And I mean, I think us and all the fans and you guys, everybody is so happy about it. Like, I don't, like, maybe there's a minority of, like, 1% of people who did who would okay. rather league match. Yeah. But, like, they've no, never been, They've never been to an event. <laughs> No, and, they, and they don't watch either dude. so they just wanted to fucking be included in the conversation it, they did it just wouldn't have, have been right. entertaining like even for the pros to go there like you said if we would have went there and had to have played a team that was maybe like 11th seeded or ranked and just like 3-0 smoked them we would have been done in 30 minutes and so we just traveled you know 20 hours to to play 20 minutes and, yeah. and like there's no way anybody's gonna have fun doing that we won't have fun doing it the fans aren't gonna have fun watching like that's just how it is it, it, well first it would have been super taxing on the players yeah. right on the players the, the travel the amount of time that they're because we're traveling almost every single every other weekend yeah right which is fine if it would have been a cool format but not for a single game yeah you know what i mean like it, it takes away fans were about to you know pay a lot of money to go see two matches which is done in traditional sports which is why probably they thought it'd be a good idea like what what needs to happen is that this this format needs to be applicable to owl you know what i'm saying yeah. if we're able to take eight teams in the owl and, and and do it for this 
for for OWL take they take our our, our format and do there. OWL is gonna explode because you're never gonna have that opportunity to have. When was the last time there was a, a, a an OWL MLG like tournament where every team goes? There's a fucking open bracket and you fucking go since off. before franchising. Since before franchising, yeah. right? And I think that that's one of the things. Like we like I, I understand app applying traditional sports blueprints to what we're doing today, but we don't have to. We can follow it, but we don't have to do that. We need we can we need we don't that doesn't need to fit into us. We need to make and pick and choose what fits into this format that's going to work. And I think that, like, now that we have this, is going to make for more creative, uh, you know, storylines because it's all how much, how much, how many points do you get? 10 points per championship? It's like per win, you get like 10 points. And 10 if you points win the win? tournament, you get like 50. I okay, think. got it. Yeah. Got it. So I think it's going to be good. No, yeah. I mean, I think that Call of Duty has been the guinea pig of format changes forever. Like every year for the past six years, we've changed our league or our tournament format or the, the circuit or however yeah. it's run. Like we've changed it every year. Like we used to have like those weird weekend groups in the league and then it would go to a playoffs. And then, then we had like two divisions and like, you know, we've been the guinea pig forever and we've been trying to figure out what works. And we kind of got to somewhere where like people enjoy watching these open events. That's why we have like, you know, the open events last year. People do enjoy like a nice big league, and so that's why we had the land league and all that stuff. And finding a way to marry those two is really important to be able to like have like a weekend long thing where somebody plans for to come spend a weekend and watch all their favorite teams play and watch the storylines. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is this is getting there. I don't think it's a hundred percent there yet for like what it needs to be. Like I think there's still some stuff they can change, but for like especially changing it last minute and for the first year of franchising i think this is a good like marriage of the league and the tournament structure where you're getting a bit of both and like a little bit of weight into the end of your year from playing these tournaments yeah i think that that uh it's i couldn't believe it because it was so it's it, it it didn't take long for us to convince them that this was the better format which is you know props to them for be even because i know they had to fight their battles yeah. right because as I've always said, if this is a building, there is the the he, the people at the top in in Activision. Then there's floor nine with lawyers, floor eight with lawyers, floor seven with lawyers, floor six with lawyers, floor, and then you have the people on the ground that are doing all the work. So I know that they had to fight their battles to make this happen the right way. But I think that this is gonna you know put that into perspective for other leagues that that you know, make, makes it better. I mean, they were selling tickets. Like, yeah. to change the format after you'd already selling tickets, like, that's a pretty big change, you yeah. know? And, and so, it's a bonus for the... I yeah. mean, look, if you buy... If you buy, if, if I pay $250 for a VIP ticket and I pay to only watch one match and yeah. now they're telling me, it's like, hey, you're 250 Now you're watching, you know, s you know uh, 16 matches yeah. if you want. Like, that's a bonus a for deal. me. Yeah. yeah, it's a super deal, right? Like, now it makes it truly worth it because you're not just going to get to see the the... The formals, you're gonna get to see the clasters, you're gonna get to see the the aches, you're gonna get to see like all these massive personalities that whether you're a fan of their team or not, they're still personalities in the space that you wanna go see. You know what I mean? Uh Michael Jordan fan forever and always. But if I would have if, if I met Charles Barkley and I was fucking in awe of it, I if I would have had a chance to meet Magic Johnson, I would have been in awe. Like that's the sort of opportunity that 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 happens. I'm not selling this shit to you guys or trying to make it sound <laughs> good. I'm just like it, it I haven't really had a chance to talk about it openly. It will be fun. Yeah. It will be a lot of fun. Like, I think that the events that, I don't know what you guys have planned, obviously I'm sure something awesome, but like, especially for Empire plans, like, you know, they've done the Overwatch League for the Fuel, their own events, and I've watched videos on that. Like, it's going to be a spectacle. Like, it's oh, going to yeah. be a show. It's going to be a fun thing to come to. Like, that's not gonna, that's not a lie. It's going to be a good time to yeah. come out and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's that's what it's about. And, and, and I'm glad that we're thinking about it. It's like, what's going to make the fan want to come back another time? Because the, the match... They're gonna watch no matter what, whether they watch it live or they watch it in in on, in their homes on their computers. That's that's a different, a completely different thing. What we want to create is an experiential sort of environment where they're like, "This is why I come to see this shit live." You know, like this is why it's better to watch it in person than it is watching it from home with my hands full of Cheetos and and <laughs> and you know chips and shit. No pants. No pants. Yeah, in the comfort. Well, now that's starting to sound a little bit better than fucking having to get dressed and going out there to go do that, but. Uh, it's super psyched. When is when is your homestand event? Oh man, I don't know the exact date off the top of my head. No, no. April fourth for the Huntsman <laughs> Chicago Wind Trust <laughs> Arena. HuntsmanTickets.com. I can't believe it. Hastro. It was don't like, get mad. It was it, on July fourth. Yeah. But like I don't. I think we 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 lost that one. So I think now it's like March eleventh. Dude, or something, imagine dude, July fourth event in Texas. In, in Texas, it would have oh, been a good time. I think, been I, sick. Yeah, I think I would have fucking brought my gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. 
but we are in Texas, so it, it you helps. could if you yeah. wanted to. <laughs> yes, that's that's also true. Um, one of the early days, like you, you got to experience the sixty fifty house, sixty fifty Russell Drive, uh, in person. Okay, what what was that like for you? Oh man, I spent more time there yeah. than you, so. That was a interesting time. I mean, it was just, it was a little weird for me. I mean, just because a lot of it, um, like I don't harbor ill will or resentment or anything towards yeah. it. That was so long ago, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't care. But like, I, it, it was a weird dynamic between me and Matt and Nate Shot. Mm -hmm. uh, like we had a very weird dynamic between us where, I mean, we now we're, we're friends and like we've you know, bullshitted and had drinks and stuff. But back then it was like, he thought I was kind of stepping on his toes a little bit, mm -hmm. almost at all times, just trying to like talk over him. But or... you're a leader. Well, I wasn't. I'm sure I'm at fault here too. Like yeah. you know, I wasn't exactly the most compromising guy back then. And uh, if we would just butt heads a lot, and you know, being at the 6050 house because I was gonna live there. That mm -hmm. was one of the stipulations when I joined up there because I originally was gonna live there. And then by the time I came up there, Flame had already moved in, and Bose had already like claimed the other room, yeah, so yeah. there wasn't anywhere unless we doubled up a room. And we're yeah. like grown men; we're not going to share yeah. a room. You well, know? Crim Six and Maniac shared that room for a long time. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. <laughs> well, they've like they've known each other, right? From like Halo and stuff. Then maybe, <laughs> maybe, hopefully, maybe. hopefully, because I I don't know. But it like being in the house, like it was awesome. First of all, because it was the first team house I'd ever been in, just to like have the environment, playing, you know, boot camping, and I think we played like AW there early, which was awesome, and. Being just in the environment with your teammates in that for the first time was awesome. Just to be able to like go to the movies or we'd go get Chipotle or Panda together or, you know, just however it went, um, you know, sleeping on the couch with like a towel as the blanket, you know, like we were yeah. rough and tumbling back oh, then. Yeah. Like I remember we like that was during the pranking era too. So they were trying to prank like at all times. Oh, they dropped water on uh, you, They right? dropped water Holy off shit, the balcony yeah. while I was sleeping and I got pissed, dude. Like almost fought Nate. You did. It, you dude. ran upstairs I, and I'm oh, like, oh, I'm gonna have to step in. Oh, I, was I, like, was, I was like, oh. I was pissed, dude. I was like, no. That's like the only thing. I was like, that's the only stipulation I told him was like nothing while I'm sleeping. Like yeah. just nothing while yeah, I'm nobody sleeping. Likes yeah, to be whatever. Abruptly, yeah. And then of course dumps a bucket of water off the second story balcony onto me while I was sleeping and I was furious, dude. Yeah. And it was just like a lot of that. I remember Big T was getting into his stocks then too, and so he was just like walking around with his laptop at all times, just like always had his laptop on him. Yeah. And you know, then at the time, that was when we kind of had like that's when we picked up Proof, and we had Seth there, and like Proof is still one of my better friends from the entire scene, and mm -hmm. so just to have like a good friend of mine who I'd known since 2008, 2009 was really awesome, and it was the camaraderie. Like yeah. you don't really have that camaraderie much anymore. The just like the four dudes trying to make it like living in a house just kind of like playing call of duty all the time yeah like it, it's special to me like yeah. although it was kind of like i was on the outside looking in because i wasn't living there fully and i kind of felt like i butted heads with the the leader of the mm -hmm. team and but it was a lot of fun like i yeah. i look back on and have fond memories of those times of just like you know even like we flew to Niagara for an event. And remember, we had to emergency land the plane. And I don't know if you remember it, but like that was one of the scariest moments. We were so. just talking about that. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, we we the, the plane's going like this, and then all of a sudden, someone starts having a heart attack, and then the plane's like. We went from thirty thousand feet to the ground in less than five minutes, yeah. and it was one of the scariest things yeah. I've ever been a part of. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I think she was okay, or whatever happened was okay. But you know, it's just like all these moments that yeah. happened along the way. It's like I look back and I have like I remember them and they're like one of the like craziest or like memorable moments I've ever had. So yeah, uh, the sixty fifty. I mean, it was cold as fuck up there, yeah, dude. 100%. It was really cold, but you know, it was good times. I yeah. think we had an, I think we had enough good times up there to make it worth it. Do you think now that the amount of money that has come into the scene is sort of going to make that opportunity disappear for like up and coming gamers? Do you think that as a gamer, do you think that uh, or as a professional player, do you think that living in a house with your team at some point or another is like the i i see it as a as a rite of passage almost yeah, 100 you know percent 100 percent it's a rite of passage yeah. like i will never live at a team house with my team again, again like, right well you're older now. yeah i did the optic one a little bit and then i did the phase one in austin for a year and now i'm just done with team house now like yeah. they could be your best friend and your best teammate but they don't make a good roommate <laughs> like no. that it's going to cause problems yeah. but like it is a rite of passage to like have that once and to be like like a lot of uh even my teammates now like Ender's never lived away from home and he's moving to Dallas and oh, in another country for the first time yeah but we're playing out of the offices so it's not the same like he's not living with all of us and we're not having that like he's our little brother type thing or you know what I'm saying whereas if you all lived in the house together it's a, such a different dynamic and like the chemistry and the camaraderie and the bonding it goes so much further than you know even going into work every day or whatever it is so I think that like 
with the thing with everything going franchising and like these big buying leagues and you know i know call of duty is doing like the challengers path to pro stuff and i just hope that's supported more yeah. and that's that has a good support system so where teams in the amateur circuit will buy these houses or will rent these houses to, to house their teams so they can get yeah. better to where winning in the in the amateur league is worth it and worth it to these organizations and so i think that the, the support needs to be there because i do think it's like one of the coolest and like most like oh i made it or i'm gonna make it in gaming or you know in esports when you're coming up to to live in a house that's paid for by an organization that's like the dream like i don't yeah. gotta pay rent you know yeah. like that's a lot of money so i think it's it, it will be missed if it doesn't happen anymore but i think it's it's something that almost every like esport professional should experience once very very cool let me give a quick shout out to the sponsors and then i'll get back to it man so I just want to give a huge shout out to Turtle Beach, obviously, for supporting me for as long as they have and supporting the Hex Quarters as the official headset of the Hex Quarters. And secondly, for like the fifth or tenth week in a row, we have DoorDash coming in, okay? So whether you're having a long day at work, tough day at school, still stuck at the office, you got to treat yourself to the meal that you deserve on demand from your favorite restaurants. Restaurants come to you with DoorDash, okay? So whether you love to cook, but you're not in the mood or you just are here at the office and you like on the way there, you just... Punch it and punch it. Look up what you're looking for to eat. Order it before you get into your car. And by the time that you get to your home, I don't know how far you live from home, but if you do, if you time it correctly, you will be able to get the most fire food that you want because uh, DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city. Ordering is super easy, as I just mentioned. Just use DoorDash application and choose what you want to eat, and a dasher will bring it to you anywhere you are. Not only is that burger place that you love on DoorDash already, but 310,000 other amazing restaurants are as well. DoorDash connects you with door-to-door -door delivery in over 3,300 cities, all 50 states, and Canada. And if you order from your local go-tos or choose from your favorite chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and the Chick Cheesecake Factory, again, they bring it to you. No hassle. Just let dinner come to you. Don't worry about dinner, okay, with DoorDash. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash application and enter promo code eavesdrop. Anybody that orders $15 or less from DoorDash cannot be my friend, okay? Treat yourself right. Eat what you need to eat. Order away and let that food come to you. That is $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash application from the App Store and enter promo code eavesdrop. Again, that's promo code eavesdrop, E-A-V-E-S-D-R-O-P for $5 off your for first order from DoorDash. DoorDash. Again, you got to download it, use our code eavesdrop, and you get $5 off. And again, huge shout out to them for supporting us for as long as they have. Thank you very much, DoorDash. So huge shout out to both of those sponsors. Thank you, DoorDash. Thank you, Turtle Beach. The thing about Team Houses, though, that, that it also allows you to have this, the, the sort of level of camaraderie, as you were saying, that you don't often get an opportunity to experience as, as, a, as a regular online team. Um, and, I, and I do think that having the ability to to teach to teach people how to live with other people is like super super important because you, you that's a level of respect that you have to teach yourself because when you're at home and I'm guilty of this right I'm uh, culturally you know Mexican moms take care of their kids they do laundry and all this and that when you're living by yourself you don't give a shit about any of that but when you start to realize that other people live there then you start to say okay well, I have to be respectful to other people that live here. So I'm going to pick up my fucking trash and not charge, get charged 250 bucks. <laughs> um, but it, it, it does help in that. The other thing that I think uh, a lot of people missed out on was the opportunity to live there and create content out of there. Not just practice, but actually create content that was going to help their channels grow to something that, you know, because it, it does help, obviously, right? To have uh, big personalities on your YouTube channel as part of your video every single day, that fucking helps. That oh, was yeah. the other reason why I think that we had such success because we... It, it didn't take it was easy for nature to collab with with big time it was easy for embos to collab with with seth and so on and so forth and i think having the that mentality and going to a team house to not think of it as a training facility as much as an opportunity to build a media uh company for yourself is is like a priority number one so i i, I am gonna miss it i am gonna miss that because a lot of shit happens that people want to watch I, I, everybody wants the house tour the the glamorous house tour that's going away and now it's going to be like well this is what my training facility looks like yeah. you know what i'm saying and, and as cool as it is and as thankful as we all are loses the realness a bit it loses the realness a bit it, it, it loses that startup like grind mm -hmm. grimy grind that you have to go through and, and we romanticize and look at it through rose-colored glasses as much as we want but it it 
it was a beautiful moment. I mean, there was like rats in the house at one point because all the garbage. So like, yes. we definitely look at it through <laughs> through through a lens. So yeah. <laughs> it was like Flame Sword always tells a story how he'll be watching TV downstairs. Then. They're they're all blazing up and they're just chilling watching TV and all of a sudden they see beep beep beep, 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 beep <laughs> little Mickey Mouse come out of the fucking you know thing and then I get there and I'm pissed I'm I'm, I'm oh, yeah. human I'm like you motherfucker I told you guys all you have to do on Wednesdays take, take the out the garbage. Garbage. that's it take out the fucking garbage like I cannot like and and I had to get the maids to come on that day and to take out all the garbage otherwise it was never gonna happen at one point. Right? And we live right next to the forest, too, in Illinois. Yeah. Like, There's a lot of wild animals out there. Luckily, it wasn't a raccoon infestation, right? Because yeah. that would have been tougher. But like, it, it was. Th- there was a point in, in, in that where you couldn't even get to the car because it, have you ever seen hoarders? Yeah. That's yeah. what the garage looked like, but with full of garbage. And you just and I'm just like, I'm throwing all this shit out. And it'll be like, Nate will be like, no, no, I got my golf clubs in there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> if you can tell me where, I'll let you keep them, okay? But no, there was nowhere to be found. Nate had like bags upstairs. Was, he had a family of mice up there, and it wasn't gerbil. He, I, I'm like, why don't you just buy them them little running wheels <laughs> while you're fucking at it, right? So you could get some. It exercise. teaches people to grow up. That's what yeah. those houses did, and that's what a lot of that was for us, especially. Like, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of that for you know Ilya and Shotzi living all alone for the first time. Are they, and uh, rooming together? Or? They're not rooming together, but they're nearby. But they're both 18. For like, yeah. they've never lived off at their parents' house. Like, there's always going to be that growing up stage. Yeah. And I think now it's accelerated because back then we're all living in a house and like. You're, you're you were like watching us so no. you're like you're not our dad right. like you know so like it's just a bunch of kids really like 18 19 year old kids running around a house and like not taking out of the garbage and not cleaning or doing dishes and you know i experienced that in the face house like like attached would put his dishes in the sink and he'd be like what do you mean i did my dishes and it's like where do you think how, do, how does the dish get clean yeah. dude like you know and there's a lot of growing up that happens there and there's a lot of fun watching that happen and, and sharing the stories and being a part of it which is what a lot of the fans aren't going to get now with these kind of like working like office spaces type thing like yeah. it's going to be more professional content and you know video shoots and skits and stuff it's not going to get that real like i'm growing up and you're watching me grow up feeling well, one of the reasons that i like the the vlogging aspect and i like to do my podcast like this i could easily build a fucking stage right back here and have it super professional and there's a place for that absolutely but i am such I, i'm i'm in such <laughs> I'm enamored with the fact that anybody can do what we do. And and above anything else, like I want uh, the point of YouTube has always been to me that like we can do it with like nothing. We had a bigger uh and you were there for this, I'm sure. W- when we did the uh the AW announcement the for for Call of Duty, were you there when we had two teams? Maybe. Oh, I, Wait, I was I was I was there. I played AW early at the house and then I got okay. dropped like in the so, next yeah. month. Okay, so it was yeah. so it was you. So to give you an example, Activision spent four million dollars to to release or to promote the release of the new game in uh it's like a movie in or something? No, in oh, Dreamhack. Okay. okay, so they paid like four million dollars, they flew in fucking pros, they did this, that and the other, and they and they and they spent four million dollars. And they, they got, I think, uh, around 60,000 to 65,000 people that watch, or, or a little bit more. Out of our house, which we paid, I think you'd said around 2750 or 3750 or something around there. $3,700 with a $1,500 computer with a $120 <laughs> camera. When we announced the new game, uh, or the new, the, the new eSports setting for our game, or I think it was Advanced W, with Optic Nation and Optic yeah. Gaming, yeah, yeah. that got to a, like 99, I think. We didn't break 100. I was pissed. We didn't break 100. If we would have started an hour er- later, we would have because we would have caught the people coming out of school. But that's what I like about it, that anybody at any moment can make magic happen with nothing but a fucking phone. And I think that we're also going to lose that with the amount of money that's coming in because we are going to have the professional mm-hmm. settings. We are going to have that. And that's going to make it... I don't want people to be disillusioned with the fact that they can do it. I don't want them to see the the stage and be like, the only way to be successful in the space is if you have a stage like that and a camera that's expensive as fuck. Matt, how much are these cameras? The one that I'm pointing at? 400. That's 800 bucks. The only expensive camera is the $5,000 one that I have right there, which is my uh, Sony A7S, which I also vlog in, in which we also shoot everything with. So that's worth it. Yeah. But to throw a podcast, you can go that. Like, there's only one, two people running this shit, yeah. right? Maddie edits, I do the thing, and that's a two-man show, right? The way that, that Hitch won two esports industry awards, or, you, know, you know, whatever, was because he had a story to tell, 
and we gave them nothing. I gave them nothing. I literally just gave him a camera, a plane ticket, and a bed. And he just, on his own shit, went out and recorded it. I didn't give him the most expensive. I mean, actually, I did give him the most expensive <laughs> camera. It was the 5D Mark whatever. But that, I think, is also going to lo get lost out there. And I don't want anybody that watches this, do not, do not believe the hype. Okay? You will be able to do something with just a fucking phone. More than ever now. Right? And then work yourself up to buy the cameras that are going to make your quality better. But there isn't... There isn't that big of a difference in, in, in quality if the story is not there to fucking begin with. Like, yeah. everybody has something to say. I think the biggest thing <clears throat> for us when we were doing it, at least, like, we were trailblazers in a way, especially, like, you guys' optic. I mean, Matt and you basically taught me how to do content. I mean, the first time I came to the 650 Russell House, me and Matt did a, like, intro vlog, like, right there, you know, and, and y'all really taught me how to be comfortable in front of a camera and do the whole content thing. But back then, we were wondering if it was going to work. Like, we were wondering if this is worth it, if it's sustainable, if this is going to work. Whereas nowadays you have proof it's gonna work. So like if you just do it, you know, save yeah. up some money, buy a camera, buy a mic, and just start doing it, yeah. then like you have proof of concept that it does work if you find that niche or you find that, you know, whatever it is to where you fit in or you tell a good story or you film something awesome or what even do a podcast just like regularly. It'll yeah. probably grow. Yeah. You know? And that's something that I've told people all the time. How do I get started? How do I get started? I was like, just start doing it. Like you just gotta start doing it every day. Just start doing it. And Hopefully you get to a point, you know, it does require a bit of luck, but I mean, if you have the storytelling or the charisma or the personality or even just like the motivation and, and you know, the eagerness to do it, the, the passion, like you'll do it. You'll, yeah. you'll be successful in whatever you do. Yeah. Because you, at the end of the day, whether you get paid or not, whether it grows or not, you still created something that belongs to you. And it's a creative piece that you look, if you ever sat there and like, I think I'd be good at, at podcasting. You probably are. You already are because you think that you already think that you're going to be. And if you start your podcast and only 10 people watch it, you still made a podcast. You still created something. And that's your reward. That should be the thing that you're proud of. The fact that you thought about wanting to do something and you went out and did it. That's that's like part of it. And, and if you focus on that instead of the monetary gain that now you see, like it wasn't always like this. Yeah. Like you said, uh, it, it's us doing the hard work and going out there and figuring out whether or not it was going to work for you to get a proof of concept for you, you should just have all the confidence in the world. It may not be for you, but guess what? It fucking might be for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's no way that you don't give yourself a shot. Yeah. Who in the fuck are you going to be like, no, nah, I don't believe in myself. And like we're entertaining people, but probably not the most entertaining people. I'm right. sure like other people out there, you know, like they might be like, oh, these guys are huge, big personalities and they know yeah. how to do it all or whatever. It's like we didn't always know how to do it all. We didn't always know how to talk correctly or, yeah. you know, even make it flow correctly or, you know, all that stuff. And it just comes with practice. It, it comes, comes with, with reps like, yep. like anything else. Do you think the same thing is applicable to professional players or do you think that there is that one separation? In what way? Well, like for content we, and pro players? No, not content necessarily, like actual pro players, because we just talked about, you know, giving yourself a shot and actually going for it from a content perspective. But if you're a pro player, I'm sure pro yeah. players come to you and like, how can I be a pro player? Give it a shot, but yeah. it might not be for you. You might not be good. I know, like, I tried, yeah. you know, or not didn't fucking fool it, but I, yeah. I wouldn't have made it. I don't have my thumbs and my hand, my eyes are not the same as what you were given. You yeah, know what I mean? That's the toughest one for me. A lot of people asking how to, like, be pro in Call of Duty or how I got here or whatever. It's like, I think, first of all, there is a level of, like, talent that you just have or you don't. And the talent can grow from a young age. Like I said, I've played video games since I was, like, five or six, playing, like, Goldeneye when I was eight years old. Like, you know, so I've been playing video games since a young age, and so I am probably learned how to do it now from being so young playing them. And if you don't have that just, like, baseline of talent and skill, like, it's really tough to overcome because of how selective it is. I mean, there's, what, 80 pro players in the franchise league or 60 or whatever it is. So, like, there's not a lot of people that get put into this thing. And so then, like, my best advice to, like, amateur players and stuff is, like, you have to have that one tournament. Like, you got to put in all the time. And, like, for example, last year, that Kleenex kid where he just had, like, an insane champs and now he's on on Toronto. And, and so to just have that one tournament where you just show off to everybody that like you're really good, you just like, you know, kind of just like let your balls hang a little bit, you know, yeah. like and that's really what like making it now is in in an esport and especially in Call of Duty specifically is you got to be good enough, you got to put in all that time, you got to have a decent team, you know, all that other stuff, and then there's just got to be that one tournament where you just go off and just show everybody what you're about, and then from there, you're just, like, in, and yeah. you'll just stay in, and you won't ever really fall out unless you do something drastic or your skill falls off or whatever it is, but that's, like, the best advice, and it's not even the best, like, it's not even really good advice, you know, because it's kind of, like, luck-based, but 
that's the best way I can describe it in Call of Duty. It's like you can make it on a P2P team and an amateur team, and they actually have huge prize pools this year. So like that's actually something to fight for. Is like yeah. if you don't make it in the franchise league, there's still a lot of money to play for, and, yeah, a lot and of you're like not respect. competing against the Clayster anymore. Exactly. You're, you're competing not... people your level. Exactly. So the opportunity is there. The opportunity is there, and then hopefully we'll see how it goes. But like this year, you know, hopefully the top P2P teams. As some of those players start getting, you know, sold to franchise teams, and yeah. then there's a way for you to move up, and that yeah. precedent is set there. So that's hopefully what it's going to look like. And yeah. I mean, I don't. Who knows? Because I mean, look, look, this is the first year that we have subs yeah. in the game. How is that going to work? It's right? Be crazy. Like, how, how do you how do you pick which which uh, do you pick at which yeah. point? Like, we we have obviously general super super good at the game, and 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 uh, like I think a, a fucking excellent. He should be a starter, starting somewhere. caliber player. Yeah. But how do you put him in when you have other cal? You know what I'm saying? Like on a team like yours, you don't. Yeah, like you can't really. I mean, and even for a team like us, like are we gonna sub Tommy or Titian? And it's like maybe if we're up two zero in London, we sub Tommy in for the third map just for the yeah. London crowd or something. But like realistically, Call of Duty's always been centered on your group of guys, and it's gonna take a lot of culture breaking to break that down into being yeah. seven dudes now, not five guys or yeah. four guys or whatever it is. And that's going to be tough. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these other teams like Toronto or, you know, even like the Gorillas might sub in Blast because he's also a starting caliber player. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. And I think there's going to be some interesting substitutions like mid-series s and type substitutions. But, like, that's so hard to, like, break up the chemistry. Oh, and, yeah. and, like, you're playing with four other guys all the time. And then if they're just randomly another voice who doesn't know our strats or, like, who maybe knows them but not, like, the, the intricacies of them, like, that's going to be tough. And it's yeah. going to take a lot of breaking down walls to get to a point where those subs are going to be really useful, in my yeah. opinion, at least. Same. I, I, it, when it first started, like, one of the first things that, that, I, that I talked to General about, I'm like, I'm like dude, are you sure you want to you wanna do this? Yeah. Because, you know... I. I don't know how it's gonna work. You know what I mean? And I, I, I obviously want you to be successful. And I obviously want you to do that. And and from my perspective, I'm like, I'm gonna pick up a fucking starter as as one of the subs because that's what you do. You protect the 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 investment by making sure that you have something to do. And I guess that's the point of the sub. But at what point are you gonna be like, all right, uh, Pierce, you're <laughs> or formal? Uh, S and D is just not you, dog. <laughs> Let me put. You know, you can't because it is a new voice in there, yeah. right? There are things that get developed as you practice. Obviously, practicing with Umu as much as I do. You got to come play, by the way. Um, like, the, I just know where Diesel is going every single time, and I don't yeah. have to worry about that. And if you're not there doing your reps every single time, you're never going to know that. Yeah. Right? And more often than not, you're not going to discover some new way of playing. You're going to be a, a little bit of a, of a hindrance in that, in that specific scenario because, you know, you're going to rotate – a different way that you should have. Yeah, you know like I mean? if I get subbed out, say I just get subbed out for an SND, and then we lose the SND, I'm gonna freak out because it's like I got subbed out, I should be starting, yeah. I lose. So then the confidence issue comes in where it's like they think that our sub is better than me at search. So if then they I start, win, yeah. But if they win, then they're like, oh, now they're better with him. Yeah. I'm not a starter anymore. So then I'm doubting myself, and yeah. like so it creates this whole other environment where. Obviously, they have that in real sports, you know, and they just deal with that. But they also have decades and decades of cultural coaching yep, to, like, yep, build yep, them yep, up yep, and, yep. like, understand, like, you you do whatever's best for the team. If the coach thinks that you're sitting on the bench, like, that's best for the team. But, like, that's not how Call of Duty is right now. Call of Duty is still very egocentric, and everybody's still very egotistical. Yeah. And, like, I openly admit I have a yeah. huge ego, you know? Guilty. It's like we're, we're the best at what we do. And yeah. so, of course, you got to have an ego to be the best at what you do. And so, like, when you start messing with that and messing with the camaraderie and the, the chemistry and the bonding and, like, swapping players in and out, and, like, if it's always the same player getting subbed out or if you're switching players getting subbed out, then, like, the, the strategies are changing everything and everybody has to be on top of it. And it's just, like, creates this whole, like, complex, yeah. you know, clusterfuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, like, why even mess with it? Like, why not just do what we know works? These five people, they're going to be the starters unless yeah. something very drastic happens yeah. and somebody breaks an arm or something, you know? Yeah. And that's... Like, that's my opinion on it. And hopefully we, like, it grows to a point where we can use substitutions well and we, like, you know, we get S&D specialists or a domination specialist and they are in our scrims every day and know our strats and our callouts and how to play. And it works and hopefully it gets there. But I think this first year, like, it's going to be tough. I, I, I see it working for a team like uh, like Ultra. Yeah. Because what, what can happen there is... And they have a perfect opportunity to set themselves, a, 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 you know, away from the pack by doing this. I'm gonna put five players only in S and D, and they're not gonna play nothing. They're not gonna play fucking domination. They're not gonna play nothing else. They're only going to play S and D. These other people are only gonna play domination, 
right? And that is it. The, they're going to play response, and that is it. They're not going to be bothered with the fucking S&D shit. And now when you have a, a team that specializes only in one thing and they don't have to worry about other things, then they become a little bit more dangerous because that's all they're fucking I think that's doing. different. I think that them having a full roster like that sets them apart and they can do something great with it yeah. like that. Like that is different. But when you're talking about like one or two subs, like yeah. subbing in and out for the yeah. other five, but when you have like, if you can separate it five and five, yeah. get five respawn, five SND, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Like that could work. But then that's a that's a brand new format for the league, right? Yeah. Like that, yeah. now you have a, a, a domination league and you also have an <laughs> SD. Like there's two different tournaments. Now the prize pool also gets cut like yeah. all the way between, you know, because who won it, right? SD yeah. wins games. Ten people. Yeah, right. It's like, holy shit, ten thousand dollars here. <laughs> if you fucking win. Imagine they don't you come in third and you guys like here's your one fifty. We're back to PCL fucking call thirty four. Uh, I'm uh, I'm excited, man, because I don't think that uh, year one is obviously gonna be a learning experience for yeah. everybody, from the league to us to to the players to the fans. Like everybody's gonna have to get readjusted to something brand new. And I think that the the excitement level there is is building. I think that the excitement level as to whether or not it's gonna is gonna work. The fucking haters out there who are just waiting in the fucking wings to see like, all right, how can I get in here and talk shit about how much money they spent on this thing and you know the the viewership for example. And what a million be. dollars. So like, oh shit, <laughs> fuck them, ha ha ha. Like you know, I, I th there is gonna be there, but you know, I I think I think that the. That we have smart people involved. We have people who have been here for with with a lot of history in in, in Hasro and somebody like me, uh, and you know Od and all these other people that that are in there. Um, but it is going to be above anything else. I think that we should be proud of the fact that we got to a point to where individual people, individual entities, are willing to put up. 25 million dollars yeah, we built this on on this thing yeah, and we, we built fucking it. did yeah. right like it, it, it above anything else no matter what anybody says we built something so good and 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 so popular that people are willing to put money behind it and nothing speaks louder than that you know because it's it's it one thing is to put a hundred thousand dollars into one thing but to put 20 25 million dollars into something million dollars yeah that's a lot of cheese is that you or me is that me yeah. you um so uh, in, in in that regard, uh, oh shit! What the fuck is me? Um, oh, sorry, both of us. <laughs> yeah, my my bad. Uh, you know, having said that, what what do you think um, from from a? And I know that this is going to be tough, but we have to talk about it. Do you? I mean, aside from developers having having a true open conversation with you guys, right? The way that we have an open conversation with the league. What do you think is going to take for them to have the freedom to actually be able to to sort of coordinate a an attack on what needs to happen in order for shit to happen? Because as much as I have, I love playing the game. I love playing the game. I haven't yeah. I haven't had this much fun playing the game in in years. But just be, but that that has nothing to do with what the real issue is over here, right? Yeah. Which is the fact that there's shit that shouldn't be in there. There's shit that's not fixed, and we're yeah. already a, we're, we're a week away. Yeah. Um, well, first off, I just noticed your chain. That thing is icy. That thing, Thank you. That, that looks fire. Yeah. Okay. So, it so looks re chain. looks really good. Um, <laughs> second off, I guess. So I'm not. Oh man, it's it, I dancing around. You know, walking on eggshells here a little bit. Yeah. The teams are on board. The players are on board. The publisher, Activision, is on board, and it's just a matter of getting the developers and meeting them in the middle. And yeah. I think. This year, I don't think anybody expected franchising to happen this quick. I mean, even last year, people were telling me, like, it's not going to happen this next year. It'll be the next year. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, no, it's happening this year. And if people understand development cycles of games, they understand, like, the game was made by the time franchising was announced and by the, fr the time franchising was decided to, to happen. And that's just, like, they've been already working on it two, two and a half years at that point. So to, to kind of complain about the game and all this stuff about the game, like, it's Infinity Ward, and you know I'm probably gonna get yelled at for saying this, but I mean it's Infinity Ward. I haven't trusted Infinity Ward since Call of Duty Four. You know, like they've always had bomb glitches. The diffuse time is never right. There's always you one know man snaking, army. one man. Snaking. Ar you know, it's new to. There's always you know the the lobster leg shotguns in MW Two. You know, like the Akimbo shotgun. Like yeah. there's always there's always been stuff like that in Infinity Ward games, and they never really fix it. And like yeah. even in Ghost, we had the bomb glitch we at the end of the year. back there. Yeah, we, <laughs> the go, the bomb glitch in Ghost, like yeah. we lost a tournament on Optic because of that thing, we got rounded in a tournament because of it. Like, and so I just don't have like 
the the faith i guess that anything drastic is going to change like even in world war ii when we had sledgehammer they like halfway through the game they completely changed the game like, i mean conjury got promoted and then you know all this stuff happened with the game where they just completely revised it and revamped it and like it's gonna need something like that but i doubt that's gonna happen in an infinity ward game just because they are who they are and they stick by their vision and like that's what they want out of the game and so i think truly to get to a point that everybody's happy with it's gonna take like pre pre like finished development input from yeah. not only the pros but like the community yeah. and, and the even the like activision and the owners where we're in there like we should be already flying out to to treyarch or, yeah. or whatever whoever's making the next game we should already be flying out there helping them develop this thing helping them get it to yeah. a competitive level but we i also understand how small we are in comparison to the to the player base yeah but I also think that's a problem of the game not being made for competitive, where if the default TDM playlist was a competitive playlist, yeah. we would be a bigger portion yeah. than if, like, we don't even have a ranked playlist in the game right now. Like, we genuinely don't have anything. So what are the ranked pl players supposed to play or how are they supposed to get, you know, incentivized to play? What are their rewards for doing well? You know, what is their camo or helmet they get or calling card they get for getting top 100 or yeah. top 200? You know, like, all these basic things that make ranked play successful in other games where ranked is a default form of play is just like stuff that's missing in COD and has been missing in COD forever. Like yeah. we get camos at the end of the year or we get World War II camos where it looks like wrapping paper around the gun. It's like, who, what is this? You know, and it's like, where are the cool, like, yeah. you know, awesome camos, like a crown for the like, Empire? Shit, that, that's, like, that's a bronze player right there. Yeah, literally. Like wh where is like the incentives? Where is... The camos, where's the marketing push? Where is, you know, all these things that make a successful esport yeah. successful? Yeah. We're still missing all of it. And, and it's not to be blamed on the CDL and it's not to be blamed on Activision and, and it's not to be blamed on the players or the teams. It's to be blamed on the developer. And, you know, I'm sure there's plans for it to come and I'm sure there's so much legal red tape. And, yeah. But like now the CDL owns like the Huntsman or the Empire. Like they don't have to go through all this legal to get Optic or to get E United anymore. Like they just have to literally. The use cameras. their own IP yep. and, and and promote it. And so, like, it's made it easier so they don't have to go through the red tape, and now we still don't have it. We still don't have the push. And so I, I it makes me think that it's, like, a developer-centric thing. And the only way to fix that is to continue showing our, like, kind of outrage at them because they say, like, you know, being mad on Twitter doesn't work. But, like, we got mad on Twitter about Vision Pulse not working last year, saying it didn't. It made camos not work, yeah. and it was fixed in two days. Yeah, and that's something that had been a problem for eight months. And we've been telling developers and DMs, showing them problems, showing them video clips, like giving it all to them. And then like all of a sudden, we're like, no, you know, camos caused the Vision Pulse problem. Yeah, and as soon as their monetary value got affected, two days it was fixed. Yeah, and so it, it makes me think that like it's all just on them to get it to where we want, but they don't have exactly like the incentives to get it there until it starts affecting their revenue stream. Yeah. And I don't like know if that's a good problem to have and it's not. And it's like, we just sit there and we, we yell into the void. And that's why I've kind of like backed off from that is yeah. like, everybody gets so upset about like, you know, the game is like probably not the most fun Call of Duty. Like I relatively enjoy it, but like, then again, I've been doing it for 12 years. I've played through every iteration. Like it's just COD to me. I don't care yeah. what is in it, but like, Everybody just gets so upset and then the pros get so upset about it and are tweeting about it and then it creates the fans to be like, oh, this game is trash. I don't want to watch it, which then drives overall viewership down, which drives down the incentive for the developers to listen to it. So it ends up creating like a self-fulfilling like circle of like yeah. negativity yeah. and that just continues to happen. And like, I don't know the solution other than like getting in with the development of the game yeah. early. Like yeah. that's the only thing I can think that of. Is. And it's, I, I'm imagining that it's not as simple as just like removing that silence because it's a line of code and it's the butterfly effect. Yeah. If you remove a, a, an asterisk from, I don't know anything about code, but if, <laughs> if you remove a hypersand, if you remove one of those things and uh, all of a sudden, uh, all right, so now you have silent footsteps, but now it affected the map, yeah. the, the mini map, all the way the fuck over there to where you can see who's got bomb and where the bomb is yeah. at all fucking times. Like that, that like we can't, I, I can't understand the level of, of what it takes to do that because I'm and, not a developer, but at the same time like you said they should be already consulting they knew that this was going to happen yeah you know and, and it's not like it's not like it's overwatch okay this 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 esport has to 2000 it has 13 years of history right this has been a proven scene for over 10 years it is a thing that's as sure as 
uh, as a brand new game coming out this year. When it, with a new game, with a new game comes a new league or a new season. And right there and then, that should like there's. It's, it's not like we don't know if it's gonna be around. We've been around. We're gonna yeah. continue to fucking be around. We'll still play. Yeah, we're still gonna play. <laughs> People are still gonna watch. People are still gonna enjoy the game. You know that this is a thing. Why not get involved like super, super early? Now it's like okay, so who who do we invite? Right, Aches. Uh, Aches is gonna be super, super, super like competitive. This is what competitive is gonna be. Do you bring in somebody like you who understands content, the importance, the importance of streaming and all that to make it fun, like that? The fact that we don't have a BR already for this fucking yeah. game, like it's also affecting it. Why do we have TP, one of the one of the up and coming rising stars from last year? In 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 uh in the content creation side of Call of Duty, why do we have him playing a, a game that's in the past? Why don't we give him what we need so his audience can then be like, okay, well, uh, you know, I like this game. I had such a good time watching this guy that I'm gonna watch professional pe people do it. And 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 uh, TP, for example, is like a perfect example because he is a world champion. He is a pro player. He was a pro player. Now he's an entertainer and he's killing it at that. Like we should be fucking empowering these people to also bring in that. It's like, hey, you know, you. You are a content creator now, and that's all you do. All your money comes from that, so that's your thing. But you're also a pro player. What What do you think that we should do? What caster? Bring in a fucking caster and and say it's like, well, you know, what's your opinion? Okay, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Shout out, shout out, Maven. Um, anyway, that that sort of process. I, I think, I think that year number one is going to be a very, very, very tough learning experience for everybody but year two year three year four we're just yeah. it's gonna it's gonna soar i mean i think if they just like gave it a shot and like gave the like competitive sh like playlist and you know one of the first things you could click on was like ranked and yeah. like that's what you play because well, everyone plays like ranked tdm even like something competitive tdm or whatever it is like if you start it like that you're gonna start converting a lot of that fan base over because they're gonna start understanding why we play with these rules, why we're playing with like yeah. no claymores and RPGs and stuff. They're gonna start understanding like, oh, it's more about skill. And I yeah. get that Call of Duty is a fun, casual game. Like, yeah, I understand that. But like, a lot of people that play Call of Duty hit started up, hit X A A A A, going to TDM. They're straight into TDM. That's all they play. Like yeah. seventy six percent of people. Yeah, and you just need to show them like what it's about, what's fun about it, why people like it. And this year, I mean, yeah, it's gonna be. Like, the game isn't where everybody wants it to be, sure. But the personalities have always and forever driven Call of Duty. The storylines are great this year. I mean, even us have great storylines against each other this year. Like, me and FaZe have great storylines this year because we're two world championship teammates, you yeah. know. And it, it, the storylines will always drive Call of Duty. And the game has kind of always been secondary to that, in a way. It, and, like, you know, you have your anomalies like Dashy or Simp where they just, like, take over and they create a show themselves. But for the most part, it's about like the storylines and the rivalries and the winning and the losing. And it doesn't really matter the game, you know? It's like that just drives the storylines. And it's just like the vehicle for the storylines, you yeah. know? Whereas all the players and all the teams and everything, they're the ones who like make it fun. And so I think even if it's not where the game isn't where it wants to be, I think this year will still be solid just because like we're all still here, yeah. you know? No, I think, I think uh, we. we... I think this new iteration of Call of Duty has given us an, another opportunity to sort of start over and use whatever we've learned in the past decade to sort of, you know, push us to what the next level is going to be. And I'm glad that we have a league that's listening. But like you said, it's now time for the artists to get behind this thing as well, because <laughs> it's there. You know what I mean? Like we, 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 we believe in you guys. We like your game. Let us interact with it the way that we think that we should interact. I, I don't know the complexity of it. I don't know. But I do know that there's that there's an eSport out there that has been around for over 20 years who have never changed fucking maps. If anything, they added one, removed another, and, and this and the other. Like, that's the sort of opportunity that I think that we have the opportunity to do, and we're just not taking full advantage of it. And that, to me, is the most tragic part. Because if it's about money, nobody spends more money on Call of Duty than Call of Duty players. <laughs> and when you give them the opportunity to be able to earn a specific camo because you hit bronze and now you 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 have bronze imagine if you're if you're in a public lobby and you 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 kill a, a fucking diamond player you're gonna be like oh shit wait maybe i should be trying to get my diamond because i just i've been yeah. smoking this dude all game long you know maybe he's a fake and he just got to the top because he he's been carried that's gonna drive the interest right if if, if achievement hunters out there who go for the uh for the 10th prestige i don't even know what the fuck it is anymore but if, you know right if if <laughs> All the people that go for the uh, what's the the black magic camo? What is it called? The, Damascus. The Damascus. The Damascus. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Damascus. Like those same people are gonna be like, wait, 
Why does this 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 uh this platinum player have a platinum gun that I can only get there in in uh in a competitive mode? Exactly. Okay, I've accomplished this. I'm good enough. I obviously have my Damascus. What else? Oh shit! I want that too. Okay, now I'm in a competitive mode, right? And then guess what? We have millions of people that are playing that. I can guarantee that one out of those millions of players has the caliber and the ability to be a pro player. And he's never going to be able to discover it. And that, to me, is a fucking shame. Yeah, it's a tragedy almost. And I mean, like, World War II did the best of it. Like, they had an ELO system. They had rewards for it. They could get, like, helmets and breastplates and stuff like that. Like, and it was the most active ranked play we've ever had. And so, like, that just, proof, proof is right there. Yeah. You know, like, it's already been done. Like, we just got to do it. Like, yeah. and that's what... It, it blows my mind, and I just don't even get upset about it anymore. The fact that like stuff like that's missing, I'm just yeah. like. But that's a problem. It is a problem. It's, I'm, it's, I'm it's, apathetic to this situation yeah. now. I don't even try and fight for it anymore because right. I'm just like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Like, but it's terrible. It's, it's a tragedy. it's a problem that we got used to being okay with bullshit because bullshit is bullshit. But yeah. it's not okay, right? If 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 you live, if you live in an abusive relationship and it becomes okay, that's time to get out. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that we're gonna get out, but I'm saying like. Yeah. It's 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 bad when you think that that's the right thing that or that you, you just become don't, okay with the negative. You become with yeah. o okay with with that sort of a toxic environment, and 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 it can't be healthy for the developers either. You know, what wow. I'm saying? these are just regular people that want to go to work, create a piece of article, get the fuck home, and do that. But now they have to deal with with it. You know, when they get home and they go on Twitter, and now they're like, "Oh shit!" You know, something that I created. Actually, you know what? I don't know why people are yelling at me when it's fucking Bob in in uh, in shaders that that caused this fucking problem. I'm not gonna throw Bob and shaders over, you know, to to the to the wolves. So it's like this. They're psych real people too. The devs yeah, are real 100%. people too. Yeah, a lot of people don't get that. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's not just a just not an at yeah. out there with a with a profile pic. Like they, these are people who have lives, and it affects them. Your negativity affects them. I bet you they don't. They're like me. They don't go to Reddit. You know. Yeah. Shout out to my Reddit people who are positive all the time. So shout out to you guys. I cut so, back massively. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. I think. I think uh, as a, as an artist or as an entertainer, <laughs> uh, as an entertainer, you have to. You can't. You can't let the people out there influence the that like you got to a place because you know better about what you want to create, and uh, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But you got to a place without anybody's input, and I don't think that, you know, that. In this case, Call of Duty Esports got to a place because of people like us who have been fucking grinding this game in hopes that it will turn into something. Gladly it did, or happily it did, but we did put the work in, so our voice should count for something. You know, the only reason that you're able to sell these $25 million franchises is because we've been here doing it, not for free, but putting massive sweat equity into this thing to make it fucking work. Um, and, you know, that, that think, about, think about it like this. We've, we've, pushed this scene us content creators and professional players we pushed this scene so far that people developers now are able to continue to build a fucking game because it's more security and people love the game so much that they're willing to put money up to prove that they care about that fucking space so it's crazy anyway sorry we rambled on anything you want to say in the closing comments dog oh um i mean no thanks for having me hope you guys watch dallas empire this year we're gonna have some good rivalries when so. is it again <laughs> uh, sh sh should have remembered that one before I came in, but no. Um, seriously, thanks for having me, man. It's a yeah. good time. No, I it's, this. It's it won't a... be the last time either. No, it shouldn't uh, be. We got, I got, we got a lot more to talk about. Oh man, we have <laughs> massive things, dude. You kidding me? Like a lot. But uh, I know that you have to go to practice. It's your first day of work. So first day of work today, guys. Going into the first day of work. Super happy about in that. Seven years. First yeah. day. I've gone into work. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. And uh, luckily for you, you're going into a fucking incredible space. Yeah. Like the Super pictures that I've seen it. is holy shit. Yeah. It, the, the fact that you can go in there and be like, hey, uh, I'm going to create a video today for my YouTube channel. Who wants to stay back and do that and then use their, their facilities and yeah. use their camera people to do that? That's fucking insane. That's what it should be, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, um, if you don't have anything else uh, to say, I'd like to thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you to both DoorDash and Turtle Beach for uh, supporting the podcast as much as it did. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to not leave without leaving a like and be sure to share it. It helps. Don't be selfish. Share it with the world. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, one more thing because Matt didn't give me the signal. 600 seconds is going away. Uh, we have something very, very special coming back to you guys uh, instead of 600 seconds. So even though we're removing the 10-minute podcast, which is a whatever, we're bringing something cool that's super cool, and it airs next week sometime. So be happy about that because you're going to love it. Thank you. Hit him with the music.